If you're like most people, hidden in the back of your closet or wardrobe is a box filled of old family photographs that you've been meaning to scan and restore. Some of the most common issues that you'll find with older photographs over time is the fading of colours, density and even contrast. Well in this video I'm going to walk you through such an example and show you exactly how to get your photos looking great with just a few simple techniques. So the first step in colour correcting older photos is to briefly scan over the image with your eyes to assess exactly what specific areas in the photograph need correcting. So in this particular photograph you'll notice that it is quite warm and there's a lot of yellow in the highlights and if you look at the mid-tones and shadows they're actually quite red and overall the image is actually quite flat. Now there isn't a pure white and there isn't a pure black so those are the things that first come across to me when I look at this image. Now if you find that difficult to do just by visually looking at the image there are a few tips and techniques that you can use to uh, analyze an image prior to actually editing it. The first being is actually to bring up your info palette. Once you have your information palette, what you can do is go across to your tools menu and find a little eyedropper icon, which you can click on or press I in order to bring up. Now, by hovering over your image, you can actually analyze the um, color information in the red, green, and blue channels. So if you have a look at the moment, for this wall, I would suspect that in the original photograph, it would have been sort of a highlight or a sort of uh, shade of light gray. So if you look at the example here, and you look up in the top right-hand corner for the RGB values, you'll notice that your red sitting at 201, the green value sitting at 203. So those are, are almost identical in value. And then your blue sitting at 178. Now that tells me essentially because the blue is lower than the other two values that there is more yellow content in this particular area of the image. So just by analyzing that you can sort of um, and using the eyedropper you can sort of get an idea on what you're actually going to need to adjust in order to um, correct this image. So these are sort of up around the highlights, so you need to essentially remove the yellow from the highlights in order to fix that. Now along with looking at the histogram, I mean sorry, along with looking at the information panel uh, for color values and information, what you can also do is actually scan across to your histogram and have a quick look at that. Now the reason I say uh, to actually have a look at your histogram is because the first thing you'll notice with this histogram is that there is no pure black and there's no pure black. Uh, there is no pure black and there is no pure white. So as you can see by the um, where the histogram actually stops here, you've got no information up to the highlights and no information from here down to the blacks. So that's something that tells me straight away that I need to go into levels and actually adjust my black point and my white point in order to get a reasonable contrast for this image and sort of stretch out the uh, entire information that is inside of this image. Now just remember if you're scanning your, your actual photographs using a flatbed scanner you want to try and make sure that you scan using the highest bit depth possible. So in most cases if you don't have that option, they'll scan as 8-bit, but if you have the choice of actually scanning in 16-bit, I recommend you do that, especially if there's a lot of editing that you're going to need to do for your photographs. Because with this particular example, as I'm actually going to stretch out this particular histogram, that's going to actually separate the information and spread it across that, which can actually affect the quality of the result, of the actual result that I get in the end. So it's something just to think about. So let's actually go ahead and adjust this image and see what we can actually achieve. So the first thing that I like to do, and you've probably seen already, is when I'm actually correcting uh, old photographs, or any photographs for that matter, is to actually duplicate my background layer. And this is primarily because I want to uh, not only show you the preview of before and after, but also because I want to retain the original photograph information for uh, comparison and just in case I do any retouching, I'll have that information in case I need it down the, later on down the track if I happen to um, make some faults in my editing. Next, 
thing I'm going to do essentially is I'm going to make a correction to levels. So we're going to go here and we're going to go to layer. I'm just going to scroll down to new adjustment layer and we'll go to levels. Click OK. Now essentially what I'm going to do first off is I'm just going to bring the adjustment panel over here. So what I want to do is basically hold down alt key on the keyboard for a PC or the option key on a Mac keyboard and I'm going to essentially grab the black point and I'm going to pull that in and you'll notice as I pull that in the clipping warnings start to appear so I essentially want to get it to the point where just before the clipping warnings um, disappear so they've just disappeared just about there at about 51 so I'm going to set that to 51 and then I'm also going to do the same for the highlights where I'll actually grab the highlight point and I'm just going to pull that in until it starts to clip and then I'm just going to bring that back again just until it stops clipping at 218. So that essentially is going to be my contrast for this particular image. The next thing I essentially want to do is actually correct some of the color. Now I could do this using levels but I personally prefer to use selective color because it gives me a lot of controls that levels um, sometimes don't just doesn't have and isn't capable of actually doing. So first thing I'm going to do is go up to layer and then I'm going to scroll down to new adjustment layer and I'll find myself selective color. So from here once you bring up selective color I'm going to make some adjustments to the image in order to um, affect the color balance, to correct the color balance, um, especially for the highlights and the shadows and sort of the overall appearance of the image. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is essentially go to the white. Now with most photographic papers over time, especially with color papers, they tend to yellow um, and it's, 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 it can be quite noticeable. So with that yellowing it tends to occur with the actual paper base which is often the, the white so you'll end up with yellow whites so we're in the whites now and I'm just going to remove white from the highlights so I'm getting to about minus 25 and after that it starts to go very blue which I really want to try and uh, avoid so I'm going to leave it at about minus 25 and then what I might do is actually go into my neutrals and also just pull a little bit of Actually, no, I might just leave that actually. We'll just leave the neutral, um, the neutrals for this point in time. I'm going to jump into the blacks. Now, what you'll see here is if I just quickly jump to my info palette, if I just hover over the suit that I would actually um, consider to be black, it may have been slightly different, but in this photograph, I'm going to make it black. So just looking at the actual values in the info palette, you'll notice that at the moment, You've got a red value that sits at 58 and a green value that sits at 23 and then a blue value that sits at 26. So the green value and the blue value are very close. So they'd be close to being neutral, but the red value is sitting quite high above them. So because the red value is sitting quite high above them, it's actually more red in the image or more red in the shadows than any other color. So in order to actually uh, um, remove that red, I'm going to have to add cyan to the shadows uh, all the blacks in the selective color so I'm just going to grab the cyan and I'm just going to pull that in now this is sort of basic color theory so if if you're interested in learning how different colors affect each other then you might want to have a look at color theory but essentially you've got your additive and your subtractive colors additive being your red green and blue which are positive and your subtractive colors being your cyan magenta and your yellow and they're basically opposites. So for red, in order to remove red out of an image, you have to essentially add cyan into it. Or if you want to say, remove green out of an image, you can add magenta into the image and vice versa. And then also with yellow, um, if the image is yellow, you wanna add blue to remove the yellow. That's sort of a brief sort of um, overview of how uh, colors work with regards to color correction. So now that we've made this sort of rough um, select a uh, rough color correction the next thing I might want to do is go back into my levels and maybe just slightly adjust the density slightly just to darken it by a few units 
I also might want to actually go in, this is supposed to be sort of a red carpet as well, so I might just go back to my reds and pump a bit of red into the sort of into the carpet just to make it stand out a little bit more. Also might actually go back into the whites and just have a look at no, we'll just leave I might leave that set to about twenty yeah, we'll leave it set to what I had it at. But essentially here is very, very yellow. Um, so what I'd like to be able to do is trying to remove that yellow. So what I could possibly attempt is to remove the yellow using levels. Now this may or may not um, do exactly what I want it to do. As you can see there, it's, it's, it's a bit extreme with the type of adjustment that I've done. So what I might do instead, actually I might leave that. And what I can do to actually fix that up is to quickly go to layer and we might go to the new adjustment layer and we'll add hue and saturation. Now with hue and saturation, what I can do, is because there's no overall blue in this image, what I can do in order to remove the blue from the highlights, because I wanted sort of this area to be neutral without having to try and mask it off, um, what I can do instead is just to go in and grab the little blue um, hue and actually just reduce the saturation in there till I get a reasonable white. So that actually looks quite nice. Um, from from what we actually had before, I could possibly actually go back in and obviously um, add a little bit more cyan into the blacks, just to sort of pull back a little bit more of that uh, red tinge that's sitting through his suit. But overall, that isn't a bad result. And if I just quickly um, quickly merge these layers. What we'll notice, if I've just added this back into the panel, um, if I just go and turn off the visibility, we've gone from an image which is quite flat, uh, discolored, um, and doesn't have a lot of life, to an image that looks a lot closer to how the image should have looked uh, when it was originally photographed. You've got a reasonably uh, nice neutral white, reasonably neutral black, and you've got some reasonable um, skin tones there. And I, perhaps the last thing we could do is actually add sort of an overall um, saturation adjustment to the image, just to sort of pick it up a little bit, get a bit more color into their faces. But that's essentially um, all I'd probably do for this image, other than adding maybe a little bit of um, a little bit of yellow into the mid tones, just to sort of balance off that blue. Just yeah, about there. So that's that's not too bad actually. That's that's quite nice. Just knock that back a little bit. So overall, I think I've done a relatively good job at restoring this particular color photograph. We've removed the color cast from the highlights and the shadows. We've uh, actually adjusted the black points and the white points, so we have a relatively nice black and a relatively nice white. I've added a little bit of saturation and also uh, made a slight color balance adjustments to the mid-tones. So that is how I go about color correcting old photographs.